Hi, my name is Susan O'Malley and welcome to the San Jose Institute of Contemporary Art. I am standing here today in our new building that we just moved into June 2007. With this move, we've doubled our exhibition space, which includes a print center as well as a reading resource room. Today I'm standing in our new exhibition, our inaugural exhibition called Home Sweet Home, which features 14 different artists that are thinking about the idea of home. When you think about the idea of home, there's so many different ideas. You think about culture, you think about community, you think about good ideas and bad ideas, feelings of, of uh, feeling isolated and sometimes even feelings of family and being cherished. This is a piece by Jim Campbell um, and what it is is an image of his home when he was growing up. He went to college one year and came back to discover that his house had burned down. So this is a constructed memory of his own and behind it there's LED lights that move to make the house appear as if it's on fire. Other artists think about home in the way that our culture has constructed home. For instance, artist Mark Bennett has drawn out different architectural renderings of what homes from various sitcoms from the 50s and 60s would look like. So we see um, the Cleaver's home and it's perfectly symmetrical and really kind of ideal, but then it makes you think, what is the ideal home and who actually lives in these sorts of places? You or is it these kind of fabricated ideas that are put on TV? And so then it makes you think about what your home is. Also, other artists are thinking about home in a more physical way. For instance, artist Jim Christensen has built three models of homes that he's lived in in different times of his life. And he's left the walls empty. We don't see the facade of the building. Instead, we're able to see through the structure of the space. And as a result, we get these beautiful lines and shadows and also kind of a strange structure as well. This is a wallpaper installation by Cassandra C. Jones. And what she has done is she's scoured the internet for images of cheerleaders and used them digitally to make these beautiful florets that kind of look like Victorian wallpaper um, or what she calls there the, the wallflowers here. And from a distance, they look so different. From when you go out close, you see these not, sometimes naughty images of cheerleaders doing their cheering and it's just a real delight to kind of go in and discover what they are. Artists Long Win and Young Kim are thinking about their dual identities, living in places like Vietnam or living in places like Korea, but also coming here to the United States. This is a piece by Richard Barnes and it's a photograph of a bird's nest. What this piece makes me think about is kind of how birds go around and pick up little fragments and pieces to make their home and it's a really beautiful model for how we could live locally pick up things um, that are immediately surrounding us to build our own nest curatorially the the ideas behind this this exhibition really focus on our constructed ideas of home the memories of our home and also um, feeling torn between homes and, and the, the various perspectives of thinking about the idea of home, both physically and also in our, in our minds as well and how we negotiate that. I'm Erin Swizan and I'm the Executive Director here at Work San Jose Art and Performance Center. For 30 years, Work San Jose has been a supportive community for artists and non-artists that uh, sort of nurtures creative experimentation. Um, while I and our gallery coordinator are paid part-time staff, really the work of Works is the result of dedicated volunteers who themselves are community-minded artists. Works as an artist-run organization really recognizes the fact that artists are the best advocates and mentors to each other and to the community. And um, I think this show is a great exemplification of that because it's our annual member show called Housewarming. 
And the only requirements for being a participant in the show is that you're a member, and there are ways you can be a paid member or you can be a free member. There are ways to do that. Um, it's a very egalitarian process, and that your piece has to fit into a size restriction. So we have 200 pieces from uh, a survey of the South Bay. It's an amazingly diverse show, and it is one of our favorites. We love presenting it every year. Um, it is very overwhelming because a lot of the art is out of context because there's so much of the art. And, and so when you see a piece, you can't associate it with an entire artistic vision of the artist. You're just getting a little snapshot of it. And, and so it is kind of an opportunity to shop for you know, works that are similar mind or people who work in a similar vein for the community and for artists, for the community members who come in and they see something that they're like, that really interests me or that really engages me. We get that every single day. Um, to other artists who are like, that person is, is seeing the world the way I see them and I'd like to meet them. And they can do that at works. You know, they just have to walk across the room and introduce themselves. My name is Charlotte Krukin Kempkin. Um, my work is made primarily out of recycled materials. I use typically sugary candied sweets, packaged candy, and sew it all together and make wearable sculptures, kind of looking at who we are as consumers and the shame that it is that we're sort of prisoners to what the market has to bear as, for, as affording us what we can wear. Um, Works is, is a great way to address the community. They meet everybody where they are at, um, either young or established, you know, up and coming artists, also established artists, and everybody's showing together in Works. It's a really nice place for, um, for everybody to come together in a, in a sort of safe zone. Um, I think it's a great place to do, to show some experimentation, um, to show some things that, you know, people aren't always used to saying when it comes to art um, and I think that this piece of mine is is actually kind of cutting that line you know a lot of people are unready to see a something that looks wearable and talk about it as art they want only to talk about it as fashion and immediately when they see it they want to wear it as well when you know it, it's a possibility but it's not really its intention Hi, I'm Kent Mansky, and Meaning Maker is a project by myself and artist Nanette Wild. And Meaning Maker is a guided interactive structure encouraging people to think about their life. Meaning Maker takes the form of brochures, like the one in the gallery kiosk, that visitors are encouraged to take away, fill out, self-reflect on, and file away for future use. And Meaning Maker as a tool, its objective is to encourage people to reflect on their life, to organize their thoughts, to evaluate situations and experiences, and to cultivate purpose. How Meaning Maker fits into the works philosophy is that it's about community and both the work of myself and my collaborator Nanette Wild is about critical engagement, encouraging people to um, reflect on why things are the way they are. And I think Meaning Maker, in the context of provoking thought amongst the people who take one and walk away, um, it becomes then an ongoing um, opportunity for them to experience the work beyond the gallery walls. Hello, my name is Terry Sabo Davis and I'm a visual artist here in the San Jose community. I'm a print artist um, and that's what I was trained as. And when I work, this is one in a, a large series of pieces I did that's about um, traveling. And it's a collage. Um, the eyes are of a, another artist friend of mine named Fred Lagapa and he's a photographer. And it's about looking inside, um, inside your mind, essentially, and the things we think about. I like it when people know my work before they meet me, and then they know something more about me. And when I look in this room, I see people I know. Because I've been a part of this community for 16 years, um, I've seen works change in many, many ways. And I've also seen the people that are in this room change. Um, 
my collage is, is just a small interpretation of what my life is about. And um, I guess that's why works is so important because these are people's lives. Whether they're supporting themselves as, as artists or whether they're working at Kinko's at night and, and a waitress during the day and taking care of a family and their studio is their kitchen table, you know, that's what works is about too. Thank you.